The ancient Greeks had a legend about a bird they called the halcyon. The name means conceiving at sea, since they believed the birds bred far away from land on a floating nest made of fish bones. The birds were looked kindly upon by the gods, so the weather was kept calm and the sea still for this two-week period around the winter solstice. Since then, any periods of peace and calm have been known as halcyon days. And since that time, the kingfisher, the subject of the Greek legend, has been known as the halcyon bird. The kingfisher is one of Britain's most dazzling birds, although it's usually seen as little more than a blur of brilliant colours as it flies low over the water. The common kingfisher lives and fishes along sheltered rivers and streams throughout Europe. Throughout the world, there are over 80 species of kingfisher. In East Africa, this open woodland and the margins of rivers and lakes are the habitat of over a dozen species. Above the water's surface, there's a wealth of insect food, and beneath it, small fish are abundant. It's the perfect hunting ground for the malachite kingfisher. The method of catching aquatic prey is similar in most species. The kingfisher waits on a favourite perch, plunges into the water, catches its prey and carries it back to its branch. A second dive, once again in slow motion. Sometimes, though, things don't go quite according to plan. The malachite is a close relative of the European kingfisher and is one of the smallest in Africa. It takes its name from its bright blue speckled crest. To the human eye, the male and female are identical. But during the breeding season, the male malachite has no difficulty in identifying a mate. Once the pair has mated, the laborious task of nest construction can begin. It may take them several weeks to complete the three-foot burrow and they may dig and abandon several tunnels before they settle down to nest. This hole is also the entrance to a kingfisher's nesting chamber, but it's nearly a foot across. It's the burrow of the giant kingfisher. With a beak and tail length of 16 inches, this is the largest of Africa's kingfishers. Only rarely is the giant kingfisher seen in the open. Wooded streams and shady pools are its usual haunts. Here it can hunt for its favourite prey, fish and crabs. Its wet, muddy nesting chamber is built at the end of a tunnel that can stretch seven or eight feet into the bank. The African pygmy kingfisher, unlike its giant relative, rarely enters the water. It spends most of its time hidden deep in the bushes. Even this diminutive creature, it's one of the world's smallest kingfishers, constructs a nesting burrow where it will raise its young on a diet of insects. Meanwhile, the eggs of the malachite have hatched, and the parents' exhausting task of finding a constant supply of food for the chicks has begun. 
Perhaps fortunately for the adult birds, only two of their young have survived. The usual brood is five or six. But even with only two hungry mouths to feed, the malachites have a full-time job. The chicks, like those of most kingfishers, don't all hatch at the same time, so there can be a considerable size difference within the brood. The rows of head feathers on this chick are just visible beneath the skin, while those of its nestmate have already broken through. The papyrus beds around the nest are swarming with tiny inch-long reed frogs, and it's these that form the main diet of the growing chicks. Frog after frog, as well as the occasional tadpole, is delivered to the nest and the chicks grow rapidly. At just over three weeks, the bedraggled young are ready to leave their burrow, although they'll still be dependent upon their parents for quite some time. They'll continue to be fed by the adults until they've learnt to fish for themselves. The pied kingfisher is a common, noisy, noticeable bird. It's plentiful throughout Africa, wherever there's still or slow-moving water, from estuaries and shorelines to canals, rivers and lakesides. Its main claim to fame is its remarkable ability to hover. With head held perfectly still, the pied kingfisher can select even the smallest fish 20 feet below. It hits the water with open bill, ready to seize its quarry. Small fish are usually swallowed in mid-flight, while the larger ones are taken to a nearby branch to be crushed and eaten head first. Apart from fish, it also takes frogs, shrimps and insects. Occasionally, it will hover over dry land, hunting for grasshoppers. Over most of its range, the pied kingfisher is found singly or in pairs. But in East Africa, around the Great Lakes, loose colonies of a hundred or so pairs are not unusual. The pied is the only black and white kingfisher, and it's one of the few species where the sexes are easily recognised. The male has one broad and one narrow black stripe across his white chest. The female only has the broad band. The pied kingfisher, although certainly not the most colourful of its family, is a highly adapted member of the fishing kingfishers. There is a second group, the so-called forest kingfishers, that only rarely, if ever, enter the water. The grey-headed is a typical forest kingfisher. Unlike the long, sharp beak of the pied, the grey-headed's beak is short and thick. It's ideally suited for dealing with the insects, mice and reptiles on which it feeds. Rather than nesting in holes along the river bank, the forest kingfisher tends to nest above ground. A grey woodpecker hunts for insects in a dead tree. It excavates nest holes in the same way, and once abandoned, these provide an ideal place for the woodland kingfisher to nest. The adults are hunting for food. Back at the nest hole, their young are already well developed. Insects, especially dragonflies, are eaten in large numbers and the parents have to maintain a constant supply to satisfy those ever-open mouths. Within a few weeks, the chicks will have developed the brilliant grey and cobalt blue coloration of their parents and will begin hunting for themselves.
Of the 84 species of kingfisher known to science, only 15 live here in Africa. Further east, through Asia and Australia, live some 60 species. The eucalyptus woodland of eastern Australia is the home of the sacred kingfisher. The large cicada in its bill indicates it has a nest nearby. It's dug out a chamber in the side of an arboreal termite nest, and it's here that it raises its young. Its call is a familiar feature of the Australian countryside. But when it comes to Australian bird calls, there's none as famous as that of the laughing kookaburra. This enormous kingfisher, it's the world's largest, has a wingspan of over two and a half feet. Despite its appearance to the contrary, the kookaburra is in fact a highly intelligent bird. Like its smaller relatives, it too breeds in termite nests. It has a thick, powerful beak and takes large numbers of rodents, lizards and small birds. The kookaburra's reputation for killing snakes is well founded. They'll eat any that they can overpower, even poisonous ones. This highly predatory way of life occasionally has its repercussions. The kookaburra's attacker is a woolly wagtail. The wagtail obviously has a nest of young nearby and tries to encourage the kingfisher to leave his territory. Its chicks could easily fall victim to the kookaburra's healthy appetite. When the kookaburra finally decides to leave, the wagtail goes with him, piggyback. There's no escape, but the kookaburra appears unconcerned about the mobbing from his pint-sized assailant. Eventually, the wagtail gives up and returns to its nest to brood its young. The kookaburra is left in peace, waiting for the slightest movement on the ground below. The rivers of Indonesia are just one of the haunts of the collared kingfisher, a close relative of the Australian sacred kingfisher. It feeds mainly on insects and crabs that it finds in the mangrove swamps. It's sometimes known as the mangrove kingfisher. It's one of the most wide-ranging of all kingfishers, extending from the coast to northeast Africa, the shores of India, through Indonesia, Australia, and across the Pacific to Samoa. Its young, protected in the rock-hard termite nest, are almost fully fledged. Inside, one of the young takes the crab and, with some slight adjustment, swallows it whole. The parents have little say in which chick eats what. They simply keep passing food through the hole. It's up to the chicks to sort themselves out and make sure each gets its fair share. The hungriest chick forces the newly fed one to the back of the nest and awaits its turn at the entrance. it doesn't have very long to wait. The chicks are now all full, 
the offer of another crab is rejected and the adult takes it away. The hard remains of the crabs have to be coughed up in the form of a pellet. It's now that the scavenging ants move in to tidy up the mess. At the end of three weeks, the young kingfishers are ready to leave the nest. Their bright new feathers are fully formed. The adults now cease to bring food to the nest. Instead, they call near the entrance and encourage their offspring to come out. But the parents' job isn't over yet. The young still have to rely on them for food for the next few weeks. The termites are once more the sole occupants of their nest, until the next breeding season anyway. The overgrown rivers and streams of Indonesia and Southeast Asia are the home of a large and varied collection of kingfishers. The stalk-billed kingfisher is among the largest. It's so named because of its huge red beak. It's rarely seen close up. It's more usually seen in flight as a dash of colour amid the dense vegetation. The Javan kingfisher is a rare and splendidly colourful bird. As its name suggests, it's unique to the island of Java. backed kingfisher sits poised over the water ready to pounce. Although its large beak is typical of the forest kingfishers, the rufous backed prefers to feed on fish. To do this, it has to find a suitable place on a perch two or three feet above the water. The wing flaps serve not only to assist in its balance, but to encourage any fish below to move and show its presence. Eventually, it's third time lucky. A quick shake and its feathers are almost dry. The Asian blue-eared kingfisher is very similar in size and appearance to the common European species. It too feeds mainly on fish. It uses the same method of fishing as the rufous-backed.
but fish are notoriously slippery customers. This time, there's no mistake. Amid the darkest bushes along these rivers lives another rare little kingfisher. This is the three-toed kingfisher. It's caught a skink, a type of small lizard. All kingfishers like to make sure their larger prey is dead, or at least immobile, before swallowing it, invariably head first. A few more gulps, and the twitching tail of the four-inch lizard finally disappears. It's along these Asian rivers and waterways that we can find a familiar creature. It's the common kingfisher, the world's most widespread species. This ubiquitous bird has a range that covers Europe, Africa, India, across through China and Japan. Its bright colours add a sparkle to any waterside scene. It's easy to see why the Greek gods look kindly upon the kingfisher, the halcyon bird. Don't forget, only five has one.